Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to be working on the Daiwa Alexa HD. This is the 300 HSLP. HS is probably high speed and L, I suspect, is lefty since this is the left-handed turning reel, but it doesn't have an odd uh, number to it. So my guess is that that's uh, what the L is and that the HS probably high speed. Well, we're going to take this reel apart. We'll show you how to service it. This is a very high speed reel. It's a 7.4 to 1. It's got a wide and uh, heavier case. This is traditionally used for uh, inshore ocean fishing as opposed to, say, bass fishing. It's got heavier line on it. In this case, it's got some pretty heavy braid on it and, uh, and a shock leader. And, uh, well, it's just in for a tune-up. So we're going to take this reel apart piece by piece. We'll show you how to do that how to service the reel and how to keep it fishing for some time to come. But well, we're going to start by removing the spool and I'm pretty sure it's just a matter of removing this hold down screw here. I just thought probably a dime would probably work better but this is a spring loaded screw here. And once that screw comes loose, you can pull it out and then press down on your case. There we go. And then it should just come off. One's being a little stubborn, I guess it does need, well that was the issue, this shock leader here is uh, was jamming the course, so that's sometimes unfortunately the way that works. And uh, we'll, we'll notice right away that we have a bearing in the back of the case, so we want to uh, take care of that by oiling that bearing. Now I did a test, everything seems to be fine. If you wanted to test your bearing, an easy way to do it, just take a Phillips head screwdriver, place it in the middle, and make sure that it spins nicely. Now I wanted to take that case off because I wanted to make sure that there were no case mounting screws on the inside of this. I also wanted to get there because well it needs a little bit of a cleaning as well and we'll see a little bit later we have to remove this bump guard. So we're going to leave that off on that side <clears throat> and while we're doing this preliminary kind of stuff I want to recommend to you that uh, you subscribe to my channel if you like fishing reel service and repair and well if you'd like to learn a little bit more about how fishing reels are made who makes them a little bit about their business and uh, in general just uh, learn how to service the reels keep them fishing and uh, well if they're yours great if they're somebody else's well you'll have a reference point here in terms of that now, some of the folks are wondering why am I stripping off this braid here and well the short answer is is he had too much line on here you need to leave a portion of your spool exposed generally that's between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch at a minimum uh, to have max efficiency so we noticed we were having a difficult time pulling that spool off and that's because well the line didn't fit through the hole in the case and when that happens you need to make sure that you, uh, you dial that back a little bit which probably removes some more of that but I'm going to leave that to the owner uh, to do that. I'm just going to grab a, a little rubber band here. And just band down that um, tag arm there so that it doesn't get caught on the way back in. There is a, a bearing here. You can spin this well to test and then apply some oil on that to service that side. So we did the two primary uh, pieces of the, the spool side. Let's go over to that gear side then. Once we take that off, we'll, we'll do a better cleaning of the whole piece. Well, we're going to start. Some of these are too many tools sometimes. I guess that's an embarrassment of riches maybe. But Next up, we want to remove the tie-down clip. That's held in place by a screw that anchors into the handle. I want to take the smaller pieces and parts off now. They're going into a parts tray. Now that's my system of organization. I just kind of use a fast food container. <coughs> and I tend to put those parts by sub-assembly in different corners 
of that assembly. So next up, I'll take the handle nut cap off. And I'm noticing that this is a reverse threaded nut cap. In other words, you go in a clockwise manner to remove that. That's kind of the old reverse of the, the righty tighty lefty loosey in this case. Uh, we're going to loosen it by going to the right side. And then I'm noticing there's some uh, some salt buildup in here. So I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, penetrating oil and a bristle brush just to see if I can't clear that out and make the handle removable. Remove remove all a little bit easier. If I can't, we'll show you. Oh, yeah, well, there we go. We, that kind of dissolved the salts. And, uh, well, this is a nice... Nice handle reel overall. I'm sure there's a ball bearing back here. Might as well put a drop of oil in there as well. I'm going to leave the bigger pieces off to the side. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures. If you're unfamiliar with the reel, if you haven't worked on one of these in a while, if you just need a good reference point and uh, just want to make sure that you put it back the right way, take some pictures. For example, on the top, under that handle, we have a metal washer. With the rectangle. There's a very thin washer here, but I'm not going to concern myself with that at the moment. What I'm going to do here is just pull that up and off. Now I can remove that washer. This is one of those spring-loaded handles. <coughs> so what they do is they compress that down. This is the actual nut that is tightening your uh, drag system. And, uh, well, when you go to um, load this back in, you're going to notice that there is a indent cut into the top of this nut. That's where that spring is going to sit. And that spring will help you to uh, have tension on that star adjuster. I'm going to use this handle now as a kind of a wrench. I'm going to have difficulty here. This should come off the same way that the other one came off, which means the old lefty loosey becomes righty tighty. Let's see if I can grab a grab the right wrench here. You could also put the handle back on or the star adjuster back on and do this. That will also help. The thing that's got me confused, I guess, easy enough to do is this is a left-handed uh, retrieve reel so everything kind of goes in the opposite direction that it would for the right-handed reel. I guess that's why I'm kind of struggling a little bit here. All right, just, it's a 15 millimeter nut. You can crank it off that way. And there's some buildup in the, in these threads, as we mentioned, with some salt. I'm sure that's where this reel has been playing. And then spraying that, uh, that shaft down with some penetrating oil. And uh, using that brush will help. On the bottom end of that nut, there is a flat washer. I'm going to do that right now before I kind of get sidetracked and other things that we're doing on this project and then forget to do it later. So just a little bit of a spray of some penetrating oil. I'll put a paper towel down to kind of hold the debris that's going to come off of it like that. And that'll make putting it back on a whole lot easier. Okay. Underneath that uh, nut and washer, we have a series of washers and a click ratchet. There are two tension washers. They're kind of copper colored underneath, sitting in that noise maker. And uh, then we have the shaft spacer and bearing for the, um, uh, the rest of the inside. So, all right, we have four of these uh, screws that are holding the case on. And I'm learning my lesson right now. I'm just going to put a drop of penetrating oil onto each one of those because it appears to me that there's some salt residue hanging around there. And if there is, I want to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the removal of these screws. And these are pretty tight. So be careful, be patient as you remove them. I don't think these would be the type with the case that we have. I'm assuming this is a graphite case. These probably wouldn't be the type that would snap, but famous last words, just as you go to say that, those are. 
When I take these out, I'm putting them into a corner of my parts tray and I am comparing the length of the screw and the width of the thread. I want to make sure that all of these are the same size. If they're not the same size, I want to identify which one is uh, different <coughs> so that when I go to reinstall, I have these reinstalled correctly. Right now the first two out are the same. I'm thinking that the one on the back corner there looks a little bit smaller. The third one is the same. I'm thinking this one looks a little bit smaller. And it also seems to have a, a little bit different coloration to it. Okay. So those are the four screws that hold this case on. That'll give us access to the inside of the uh, gear side of the reel. left there. Yes, this one is definitely smaller and a little bit longer, so we know that when it's time to reinstall, that's where it goes. Okay, <clears throat> that having been said, we should be able to lift up and out on this now. We do. We have a bushing on this side. We don't have a bearing. This is your anti-reverse clutch. Make sure that you note that if you were to uh, take that out, there's a shiny metal piece facing inward on that clutch. The case is clean, there's nothing to be done there. I like to go right away to remove these two yoke springs because my experiences in the past have never been good with these. I tend to turn the reel over and the next thing I know I'm out of sync with that. We have a big traditional forked anti-reverse and the rest, I think, is pretty straightforward. We have a small washer that would be under that case bearing. We have our spacer. So we're going to see if we can't remove those right away. And then we should be able to just pull up and out on the main gear. Sometimes that's a little bit easier than other times. You need to have kind of the equal pressure across as you pull that out. That's your main gear assembly. I think this has the all right, this is the fail-safe anti-reverse dog. And I just had a reel come in where that fail-safe had failed, and they put way too much torque onto the um, anti-reverse clutch. Look at that, we've got some broken line in that reel. So I'm wondering if that's what happened here. If somebody just came in and got that one all twisted up there and that was maybe what they were thinking was why there was some poor performance in there. Okay, the last of the movable pieces that you can remove is the yoke assembly with the pinion gear. The rest of this does not need to be removed unless you're having an issue with it. This is the trip system and all I like to do is kind of flood it with some penetrating oil, clean up any debris that's on there, And then, uh, looks like there might be a little bit of something caught in here. I'm not sure what that is. Some old grease. And then I like to use some fishing reel oil. And the oil I'm using is Pen Precision Reel Oil, just to get a good coating of oil onto those moving parts. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to wipe that up. Okay, I have the opportunity to, to remove this one case too. Let's, let's make sure we're not getting all these pieces and parts scattered about. <coughs> that would be dangerous. So I'm going to just put those in the part show. I'm going to move the gear assembly and the yoke assembly up. And I just want to come for a moment on the that little shield that's holding the uh, line guide assembly in place. So this is a long screw that comes through here. It's going to anchor both pieces of this. I'm going to pull it all the way out. 
then you can remove the uh, shield. I'm going to leave that right there because we're going to come back to it. Then we can remove the cap for the pole. Make sure you use the right screwdriver on this. These are plastic. They're notorious for breaking. You need to be, well, easy on it. Now I'm trying to remove that pole right now, and that's one way to do it. You turn your, your piece. You want to make sure that you clean the shoulders on that pole. I'm in good condition there. Okay, we've already kind of shot a little bit of oil onto that gear, even though it was a penetrating oil. So let's just do another drop or two of the, the heavier fishing wheel oil. Take your pole and put that back in. Now that pole has to sit flat to the base. So hold pressure on it. Turn the worm guide. Until it seats. And that may take a moment or two. There we go. Now we can put the pole cap back on. Hand tighten that to make sure that you've threaded it properly. Just a very short snugging after that. We can bring the guide back on. Bring the pin through the side wall. Through the hole in the carrier for that line guide. Align it with the hole in the other side of the case. Tighten that up. Okay, that's serviced. Next thing I want to do before I, I start rebuilding any of the rest of this is I want to take a kitchen scrubby and some rod and reel cleaner and go inside there and reach those pieces that you can't reach with the assembly kind of completed. So just this, now this reel again is pretty clean, but this is the opportunity to, to clean it up as best you can and get rid of any of that kind of scaliness, film, and the like. Okay, one more uh, thing I guess is just a quick inspection, make sure everything else there is correct, and we can start the rebuild on this. I'm running short on camera memory, I'm just gonna shut it right off and turn it right back on. All right, just like that. All right, <clears throat> so let's rebuild this. We have a pinion gear, and we have a yoke. Clean off the old creases on that yoke. When you look at the yoke, you're going to notice that there's two sides to this yoke. One of them involves having a ramp on it, and the other side is, is kind of flat facing. This is the ramp I'm referring to. If you look at the side of this, it will have a ramp that faces in. When you see your pinion gear, it's, it's got two different sides to that. <coughs> we have a side that is got slots on it. That's going to mesh with the slotted side of your spool here. That's how that works. So that's going to face the spool side when you go to reinstall. So let's... We've inspected the teeth on the pinion gear, made sure that they're all in good condition. I'm going to grease this up. Find the side that's got the angle on it. That's the inside. That's the inside. Bring those over and nest those in the carrier, just like that. Okay, next up then we can deal with the anti-reverse system. That's, and that's also the click ratchet or kick ratchet, either way, whatever you want to call that, that's going to work with this. This is your, your kick drive, if you will, when you press down on your carrier here. I'm going to hold that pin in here so I don't, you'll see this comes down and in. When you turn this ratchet, it's pushing it back up. Sometimes easier said. 
What that does, when you push down on that, it pulls this out and it re releases it from the spool. That's how you get free spool. Okay, the other piece I want is the anti-reverse dog. I've cleaned that up. <coughs> the anti-reverse dog is coming in from the other side. It comes in and mounts this way. There's two forks on that, so go between the forks to mount the click ratchet. Then we can bring this whole assembly over. Notice you got a square. There's a square on the bottom of this, so you need to mesh those two. Bring this over and down first on the anti-reverse dog, and then you can turn your gear so that you have the square meshed on the shoulders, the anti-reverse dog on its track, and put that base washer in that goes underneath the main gear. Let's remove the pieces of the main gear. These appear to be Carbotex washers, and you don't need to uh, lubricate those Carbotex washers. That's an optional kind of a thing, and that's on you to decide whether you want to do that or not. These are dry, so I'm going to leave these dry. Just clean these up pretty well. Now this gear has a recess outer rim here, so this is proud. So you have to note that the ones with the larger circumference, inner circumference, is what's going to be your your washer there. You have two keyed washers. Notice one is thicker than the other and one has a raised surface to it. That's your top washer. Okay, <laughs> same thing here. Inspect the teeth of that main gear. Make sure that they're all uh, uniform. There's nothing bent or cracked or anything like that. And then use your fishing reel grease. Spread a good amount on there. You don't need to get it in every tooth. Don't over glob it. It'll only throw it away. And uh, what I do for that is I use an artist's brush to help me get that done. All right, we've greased the main gear. That's going to go back on. You want to merge that with the pinion gear and make sure that it's all the way down. You heard that snap into place. First of the uh, washers goes to the outside. And we have a flat washer is next. That's called a keyed washer. Find the shoulders and bring that in. Second of those bigger dimension washers. This one is called an eared washer. It has two prongs on each side. Kind of looks like ears, right? Open center. That goes next. Top washer is, is firm. Top washer on the metal is the thicker washer with that uh, raised portion in the center. And we come back and we put the sleeve spacer on. Oops, I was an oops. I'm trying to juggle two things here. Sleeve spacer and then the lower bearing shield goes on next. All right, we're almost ready to put the case back on. The only thing missing here is those two springs for the yoke. So I'm going to go to my porch try and get those two. One goes on each pillar on the the yoke. And then we can take our, our um, case. The inside of the case is clean, so if it wasn't clean, of course, you want to make sure that you get any of the old greases and the like out. You do not uh, oil or grease the uh, anti-reverse. Bring all of that over. Make sure you have a nice tight seam on the case all the way around. Go to your parts tray, and since there was one that was the odd odd one, the thinner, longer one, I'm going to start with that. That one goes in the, the rear of the case here. And those of you that know me, know me and little screws don't necessarily play, play well together, so this may be well point where you want to go and get a, uh, a beverage of your choice. <clears throat> okay, that one's done. And I like to op go opposite corners. That keeps equal tension on the case. So we'll bring one up on this side. And I used a um, 
This is a flat bladed on the way in. This is one of those screws you can use either. When they, you have a tight seal on these, I tend to find that the flat blade screwdriver does a better job of breaking that seal than a Phillips head. And if you're not paying attention sometimes with that Phillips head, you can start stripping out the center of that screw, ruining the, uh, the slots. Okay, that's number three. You got one more to put in here. That would be up top. And interestingly enough, that's the kind of the first one I took out and last to go in on this side. So what have we done so far? We've serviced the whole case. We serviced the line guide and Paul. We've cleaned up the case. Now I just need to kind of bring it back to where it was. This is a bearing. I use light oil on these bearings because I have that anti-reverse is, is behind there and that concerns me sometimes about the uh, ability to leak that oil onto the anti-reverse clutch. There's a top bearing washer that goes next. And we have this noisemaker and two tension washers. So the, the cavity from that noisemaker faces up. That's your, your alarm system lets you know that line is coming out. The two tension washers have got a, a bevel in them. I put the, the cup facing up on the first and down on the second. That controls the tension on the star adjuster. If you don't want a lot of tension, nest them together, two curves to two curves. There's really no wrong answer in terms of how to do that. But that's how I do it. <clears throat> we got one more flat washer here. And then I got to remember that this is lefty right, lefty tidy as opposed to righty tidy because this is a left handed reel. All right, that goes in. Now we'll take the nut. Remember the cavity side of that nut faces up. And the threading on this one is towards you or counterclockwise. Do this by hand as much as you can because that way you don't risk cross threading that uh, post. And bring it down as much as you can. That will make installing that star adjuster easier. Okay, there's still a little resistance on those threads. You saw I had to use that um, wrench get it off. So we're going to use the handle to hold the shaft and grab that wrench from underneath to continue tightening down. Wrong wrench. And it seems like maybe I just figured that maybe there was just a, a little bit of an issue there, I don't know. Okay, I'm almost there. Just have one little rough spot there. Imagine it's dirt. Okay, tighten it down as much as you can. And then the next thing we want to do is get the spring assembly. So we know the spring goes next and rides in that cavity. And we have the star adjuster and those two washers. So let's mount the star adjuster next. You can see the square on the star adjuster that's going to match to the adjuster nut. Make sure that it's all the way down. And I like to figure out how to hold my hand where I'm not going to be interfering with how to mount the handle. We have that kind of paper thin washer goes next. The washer that uh, separates the handle. The handle on, and they didn't do a good job of that, I guess. So I'm going to just hold it now. <clears throat> and it's time for that handle nut. The nut cap, remember, but this goes on opposite as well. It's a reverse thread. So turn it counterclockwise. Tighten down, make sure this gets tightened down. You don't want to trap your star adjuster when you're tightening your handle. 
Okay, once you tighten it, generally speaking, if the point is facing the hole or if it's dead flat parallel, then your clip will align. And we have alignment. We've got one more screw on this side, then we can load the, the rest of this in. And we should be uh, ready for a test. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, uh, leave that in the comment section. I will try to answer those questions for you. If you maybe just want to know more about the history, if you want to know a little bit more about the features and functions of the reel, or maybe just maybe you're just uh, working on a project where it's not going well and you just need a little bit of what am I doing wrong kind of thing. All right, grease onto the shaft of the spool, back shaft of the spool. We've oiled the bearings on both sides. So this is not a reel that's totally overloaded with bearings, right? It's not one of these 19 bearing specials, but somehow well, it's got them in the right place. All right, let's load this on. Remember, it comes in from underneath. So make sure that you, you're in the cavities for this first. Make sure you have a nice seam, and then you can roll this up. And you should get a lock. There we go. And then we should be able to tighten down on this screw. And I still don't think I have the right screwdriver for this. It's a very thin um, slot. All kinds of screwdrivers, but it just doesn't seem to be grabbing it. It's almost like this is something of an elliptical kind of a slot here. But just be careful. You don't want to scratch the reel out. That's my my concern here. But use the blade that's appropriate for the slot and that way you won't butterfly the slots when you're doing that. Okay, yeah, this is a mag adjuster. You have um, capabilities to roll at. This one was left in the off position. Uh, let's, uh, let's go over one more time then. This is the Lexa A and it's the HD. It's the 300 HSL-P. All kinds of initials in there. I'm sure they mean something to somebody. What this reel means to me is we have a salt water bait casting reel that's uh, well, it's very nice with a high speed retrieve, a 7.4. We notice the bearings on both sides of the spool, a bearing on the main shaft, an anti reverse uh, clutch, and an anti reverse override. It's got everything I want in a reel, and it's not, uh, not overly complicated. Let's, uh, let's give it a try. Let's go to the free spool position. We show you how that worked before. This is not going to work because I got the rubber band. This is why you don't want to overload the, uh, the line itself. Let's see if I can spin it. I can't. Let's take the rubber band off. I'm done with that anyway. So that we can give this a test. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So in uh, casting mode, you want to make sure it spins nice and easy. This does. And if you want to adjust, you have the adjuster on the side plate here that will allow that spin the reel to spin freer. Or you can clamp down on it and let it spin uh, less easily. When we click our turn here, this should be bound. It rebounds. We should be into lockdown mode now. And again, to adjust your, your drag, tighten down, make sure that the drag's holding. And then I recommend releasing that drag. Well, this is a nice, quiet reel. Now, when I started this, I heard a click, click, click in there, and I'm almost certain it's that little piece of uh, line that we found. Well, that's it. That's how you service the Daiwa Alexa. And uh, this one's ready to go fishing for the upcoming season. And I'm uh, thankful uh, for the folks that brought that in. To our first responders and essential personnel, I'm also thankful to you for your career dedication and choice and for all you do to keep us safe and our lives well. To everyone, enjoy the art of reel repair and, uh, well, pick up a reel like this. It's uh, a little bit of a challenge because it came from the left side, so you had to remember that there's some uh, reverse engineering going on here. And, uh, well, if you keep them serviced, they'll keep you fishing trouble-free. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.